Hello friends, and welcome to Alan's Art Adventures. This past week, I was watching an art friend, Mona L's YouTube page, and saw that she posted a video on ATC Mondays. Of course, I was interested and watched the video to discover that ATC stands for Artist Trading Cards. This was a... Um, This was an art idea that developed out of Switzerland where artists create trading cards in the size of typical baseball cards, two and a half inches wide, three and a half inches tall. And they do their own artistic style on them and trade them with other artists. I thought this idea was outstanding and I had an idea of my own, which I'm going to show you today. I created a template on a scrap piece of paper so that I would make sure that I traced my lines accurately. And today I'm going to use watercolor paper. With that said, Strathmore has their various artist trading card papers and even the plastic sleeves to hold them in, though I will probably use my baseball card holders. So if I were doing acrylic, I could have used one of the acrylic trading card sheets, illustrations, drawings, and so on and so forth. But since I'll be using a little bit of watercolor today, I wanted to use my own watercolor paper. Typically, artist trading cards are done on cardstock, but as you can see, this paper is pretty thick and uh, is, is pretty durable. In fact, it is, let's see... 140 pound paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little my little template here and I'm going to trace along the outside edges with this Sharpie permanent marker. These are the fine point permanent markers. My son Matthew has started getting into drawing this week and he really liked drawing with Sharpie markers, but he didn't like how huge the tips were. And so I bought him one of these so that, so that he could uh, get a nice thin line on his drawings. All right, let's pull away the template and see how we did. Not bad. All of that black line will get cut away when we're done. Now, you'll notice, just to double check and make sure, that our line is three and a half inches in height and two and a half inches in width. Now, you'll notice that my black line is slightly outside of that marking. And the reason for that is because when I cut it away, I don't want any black along the edges. Ever so slightly. It's not even, not even a millimeter. Um, if you're in a country where you use centimeters, we can measure it really quick because I didn't do the math. It would be nine centimeters high and six and a half centimeters wide. For this project, I wanted to do a geometric design. So what, I've, what I'm going to do is take my ruler and I'm going to put a dot on the outside of my line every half of an inch. So I'm going to go like that. Let's get a good point here. There we go. One inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and then three and a half is the corner. And I'm going to do the same on the top. at the half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two inch mark. I'm going to do the same thing on the left side, on the half inch, one inch, one and a half, two inch, two and a half, and three inch mark. And lastly, across the bottom, at the half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two inch mark. 
Now, for other kinds of cards, this might not make a difference. But what I plan on doing for my picture is a geometric pattern that I learned probably in high school. And to be honest, I can't remember what it's called. So if anyone knows, you're more than welcome to add it in the comments below. What I'm going to do is start up in this corner here, and I'm going to go to my smallest line. So I'm going to line up my ruler and my first point. Let's make sure it's my first point. And using my Sharpie marker, just going to draw a straight line. Then I'm going to take my second dot to my second dot. And again, your lines can extend beyond because we're cutting everything away. And then we're going to go from our third dot to our third dot. And our fourth dot to our fourth dot. And lastly, our fifth dot to our corner. Now, when I did this the first time for my test, I, I, I knew because it was a rectangle it wouldn't work out. And I was going to leave this empty down here. But instead, I decided to take from this corner to each dot after that, just to get me to the to the edge of the paper. And I like that result a little bit better. So I went with it. And with the Sharpie pens, if you go too fast, sometimes you don't get the best, best line. So I'm going to go over this line one more time, just a little bit slower, so we get full coverage. And I'm going to go over this line one more time because my first line was a little, a little weak as well in the middle. There. Now we're going to do the same thing starting in this corner to here. So I'm going to start here to here. It's important that you start in, in the correct corner since Excuse me, since I, oh, actually, I'm glad I just said that because I would have started on the wrong one. So I actually want to start at this corner and go here. And again, nice and slow, so we get a good mark. Like I said, slow, so we get a good mark. It's a little thick, but nothing we can do about it now. And then we're going to do this one. I am very consciously slowing down my mark so that I get a nice straight line so that when I go back, if I had to go back over it, it doesn't ruin the line and make it too thick. It's just not getting the middle of this line. It's also also very helpful if the pen is more straight up and down than what I was doing. So far, so good. Let's not jinx it. And then just like before, I started here and did these last two. So I will start in the opposite corner and do these last two. So 
And that is my geometric pattern. Now, originally I planned on just doing this pattern, and then I realized that this general shape, this curve that I get by doing it from both sides, makes what looks like an eye to me, the eyelids. And so what I did is I took my children's fluoride container, which just happens to be the circle that fits in this perfectly, and I lined it up in the middle. And then I just went around the outside edge. Now, because this is watercolor paper, if you stop in one spot for too long, you'll get a bubble. And we don't want a bubble. So if you do, just go around that spot a couple times so that it evens out a little bit better. We really want it as round as possible. And what I can do is just take my pen, even that out a little bit. You won't see it much once we uh, once we paint it in a minute. There, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Now I'm going to take from my corners, opposite corners, and I'm going to put a small dot right inside the, right inside it, a small dot. You can barely see it, but it is there. And the reason we want it small is because we're going to draw lines over it in just a moment. And if they're too big, they'll show up. We don't want that. Now what I found is that my little marks divided the, the circle in quarters, one, two, three, and four, right? And if I put, just put a small dot in between, you can eyeball this. It looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to go at an angle two over, and one over from that. 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 Now, I did put a dot here and a dot here, but those lines would just muddy this up, so I'm leaving them out. And then, I'll go one over. Doesn't matter which direction you go. funny in elementary school. I had a friend who was a very good artist and mostly comic book art. And he used to say that I wasn't a very good artist because I liked straight lines. And I really did. That's why I always thought prior to prior to realizing what I wanted to do with my life that I would probably be an architect. Um, so I this definitely fulfills my concrete sequential side, but my painting, I really prefer the abstract paintings. And even in my drawing now, I prefer abstract paintings over, over straight lines. But this is definitely very fulfilling for me. All right, and now we're moving over one again. And 
Now I did this circle a little bit differently in my in my test strip. And so I'm realizing that this looks much more busy in this circle than it originally did. But I kind of like it. And each time you get around, you'll notice that you have to do less lines because some of them were already made by a previous line. Um, all right, so that one has this, this, this. It needs one to here. And one, two, here. All right. And this one has there, 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 there. It just needs one straight this way. And then this one should have all of them. One, two, three, four, and five. So that is my pattern. And as I look at it, to me, this looks like the lower eyelid, the upper eyelid, and the eyeball or the pupil. <clears throat> so I did a, a very careful test before recording this and I tried out some of my different pens. I started with my Sharpie marker, which is this line right here. And then I also had this pack of pens, Artist Loft pens in different numbers. Um, and I tried them out here, 0 0.01, 0 0.03, 0 0.05, and 0 0.08. Um, they say that they are um, water resistant, but this, this particular Sharpie marker, when I put water on it, nothing happened. So then I really loaded it with water and let it sit there and nothing happened. And then I added some color and nothing happened. Now you would think that I probably used color here, but I didn't. This is just water, and I don't want that to ruin my my all my work with my pen. So I used the Sharpie marker because I knew that I would get a nice coloring over it, um, what, what watercolor artists call a wash. So I'm going to put away my ruler and my pens and I'm going to take out a couple brushes. I have a flat a number four flat artist loft and a number five round. I also have a whole pack over here if I need something else, but hopefully I won't. The other thing I like to do, I recycle my Pringles containers, my snack size Pringles containers, because they make good water holders. So I've got my water and I have my artist loft watercolor set. I've picked this color right here for a good skin tone. I'm sure I could go a little bit darker over here, but I, I just want a light wash. And then I chose this light blue for the uh, pupil of the eye. So I'm going to take my flat. I'm going to start out with my flat. And I'm going to soak it in some water. And I'm going to bring that water over to my skin tone color and really soak it in there. Now I've tried this a number of ways. What I really like to do is once it's loosened up, bring it over here and rub it into one of my one of my holes and add some water to it. Just a little bit of water just to lighten it up a touch, but so you don't want to draw right from the from the, the cake. But I still want a good color. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to very gently color in my card. I chose the flat because I've got a lot of straight lines here that I need to that I need to fill in. And I don't want to go over accidentally. So I'm just filling this in. I could have wet the area first and then dropped in the color which makes a very cool effect. But for this particular painting, I thought that it looked a lot nicer when you just washed it on nice and gentle. You know, if you, if, you, uh, if you want a darker color, don't add more paint. Come back to it after it's dried a little bit and give it a second wash and let the paper absorb the color.
All right. Now I happen to have run out of out of uh, pigment in my in my cup here, so I'm going to dip my. I'll pull this over this way so you can see better. So I'm just going to pull out some more water, rub it into my cake. At least that's what I call it. I don't know a lot about watercolors. My grandmother was a huge watercolor artist. I only play with it. Kind of like a kid finger paints. I'm going to actually add just a little bit more water to that because I don't want it terribly dark. I want to be able to see my lines nice and clear. And I'm just going to rub that in. From what I can tell right now, brush directionality doesn't matter. But perhaps people with more experience on watercoloring would disagree. Um, I obviously don't disagree with myself. <laughs> or I wouldn't be saying it. All right. So we've got a good skin tone here. Just gonna get on this edge. There we go. And when oh, we have a little clump, try and get that out. There we go. Good. Go on. And just brushing this in to even it out a little bit. But I like that a lot. This side wet is darker than that side dry. I'm going to give it a minute and see if that's still true when this side dries. But if it is, I may have to go over this side again with just a little bit more to uh, get more of a skin tone. This is a nice peachy skin tone, and this is a very pale skin tone. I can see on the camera that you can see the difference, but in real life, this is a nice, nice rich skin tone, and this is very, very pale. Um, in fact, I think I'm just going to give it another shot. overdo it. I think that looks good. I'm going to leave that alone. Next I'm going to switch over to my my round brush because getting in here I know for me with, with any kind of flat brush, it just won't go well. So I'm going to wet my brush. You can see it's already been used before because it's already dyed quite well. And I'm going to drop it in here in my light blue. Now, you could totally use any color you want. I know I have hazel eyes, so a little bit of green and brown might work nicely, or brown eyes, or green eyes, or you can make them pink if you want. I'm just going to drop that into the palette. Add some water. Now with this, I really liked it when it was really light, just a, a light glazing. I, do, I don't really want a bright color, just the slightest hint that, that the eye has color. Even that's darker than I wanted. I'll spread it out and it'll dry out. I'm just going to go around the outer edge so that I'm careful not to not to get it outside. Um, I'm realizing that I really like to turn my paper when I paint um, and turn my canvas and I'll turn it every which way or I'll come around behind the behind the canvas and paint from behind just because I know that I can do something better from a certain certain direction than another and uh, keeping this right here so that the camera is straight on to it is a little different for me. I 
All right, my friends. That's looking really, really good. I want to let that dry. That's pretty much what I was thinking it would look like. Now, a couple little things that I had planned on doing. I have my scissors here. Love these scissors. They are school smart. And I'm just going to roughly cut it out. I'm not going to worry about getting on the lines because it's a lot easier to cut, cut it out once it's separated from the, from the pad. And I'm just going to go straight up the inside of my black line like this. And I can always adjust it later if I find that it's not that it's not exact. But you want to really stay with that two and a half inch by three and a half inch size. Certainly not larger. If you happen to go a little bit like I mean less than a millimeter smaller, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, but you really want it straight. Another thing I could have done is brought down my. Um, paper cutter and that would have given me a nice straight edge and maybe next time I'll do that but for today it's not an exact science all right and that is my artist trading card now a couple little details that I chose to do to it I have this uh, edge cutter and so, I mean, some, some playing cards have a nice sharp edge on each corner. Others have rounded edges on each corner. But I thought it was really effective for this particular card if I only did this corner and this corner where there are no lines, whereas this corner, it's the corners of the, corners of the eye. So I'm just going to slide that in here and give it a punch. You see that I have a nice rounded edge here, which I really like. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I think that just makes my card just a little unique. It's got its own little thing going on. I like that a lot. Now, another thing for artist trading cards is that you're supposed to put your name and information on the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this card around. So I'm going to put it on top of my, on top of my scrap paper just in case. And I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to sign it. Lately I've been signing all of my paintings with just my first name and the year. So just like this. It's a whole lot easier with the pen than it is with a, a paintbrush for me at least. And then because I wanted to include my address I have this stamper we use this for all of our mail. And I'm just going to smack this right in the middle. Let's get that lined up nicely. It will drive me nuts if it's not, not straight. I push it straight down. I'll give it a little wiggle back and forth and lift up. And that's the back of my card. Now, there is one last little piece. Since I bought them, I have my Strathmore Artist Trading Card Sleeves. I'm just going to open these up carefully and take out one of my sleeves to put my newly painted card in. I'm give this just a little, a little bend so it gets in there. And there you have it. That is my second artist trading card. I am very appreciative for you joining me and I look forward to putting up some new videos for you in the near future. Have a great day.